What's happening guys? Edgy Outdoors here. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to take a look at my five favorite knives under $50 for everyday carry. Now one of the key things, the reason you see the scale sitting out of here, one of the key things that I'm always looking at, and I, if you've seen any of my videos you know this, what makes a knife first of all real for everyday carry, typically for me, especially the way I dress in loose clothing, I love wearing athletic clothing, is going to be weight. So one of the key things we're going to look at as we move through this is going to be weight of my knives. And the ones that I carry the most, even if they're not my favorite, are typically the lighter ones. Um, the best knife is the one you have on you. The ones that I carry the most are typically the lighter knives. So. We're going to go through this, that's one of the key things. Now what's going to typically set most of these knives in this under $50 category, as you've seen I've done some ZT knives and some custom knives, but what really puts some of these knives in this lower category is typically going to be materials used. Most of these, if not all of these, are made from extremely credible vendors. They're vendors that are typically high value vendors, and what makes them be able to create a knife that's less expensive a lot of times is going to be the steel for example that's used in the blade that doesn't mean the steel is bad it might mean the steel has different characteristics than some of the super steels which it's typically not super steel in most cases with these less expensive knives so that being said I'm not going to compare a lot of these steels to each other simply because they're not what I would call a you know ultra premium or premium steel in any of the cases here you know they're really kind of more along the line of the value um, steels you know or the what you call value or mid-range steel so we're not going to do a lot of that type of comparison what we are going to do is comparison on the knives themselves we're going to look at weight you know and size and blades edge action etc so without further ado the first knife that we're going to look at, I'm going to slide this just over here for a second here. First knife, this is number five on my list, is going to be the Kershaw Cryo. So the Kershaw Cryo is an assisted flipper design. It is a hinderer design. Um, if you can look at that, if it focuses in on that, you'll see it is a hinderer design. It's got the little hinderer washer here on the lock bar. Although the you know the uh, handle material is not titanium. The reason Hinderer typically does this is because it is the titanium type of handle, which that prevents it, you from over opening it. Um, it is a tip up or tip down carry, right or left handed. The only reason that this typically would fall to five on my list instead of top, because I carried this knife for quite a while when I was first buying knives. Um, I carried it for a couple years is the weight so for the size of this you know 4.26 ounces is pretty heavy if we compare this to some of the other knives you're gonna see it's on the heavier side of what we're looking at for the size of the knife you can see it is a smaller knife um, I'm gonna look at the cryo family so that's the cryo one we also have the cryo 2 which is the bigger knife in the family uh, that's 5.6 ounces so that's actually close to like the ZT 0560 right or 561 so we're gonna kinda leave those as a, uh, a family affair here um, in this knife but this one's just bigger same overall design same hinderer blade shape um, same steel construction etc the steel on this is 8 CR 13 MOV so it's not an ultra, ultra premium steel but um, again we've already talked about that Overall, it's a very good knife. It's fast deploying. It's easy deploying. It is one that you can sit on the couch and, and flip around a little bit. Um, Kershaw is, if you've seen other videos from me, you'll see I, I really believe that the Kershaw is a high value company. Um, at least the Kershaw line. I'd say ZTs, some of which are a little bit overpriced for what you're getting or overbuilt, but Kershaw tends to be, you know, make quality knives and they don't overprice them and so you could typically get this the cryo uh, one for about 30 bucks cryo 2 is probably 35 40 bucks somewhere in that neighborhood or 45 bucks still under 50 bucks um, but that 
comes in ranks down at number five on our list. Number four on the list is going to be the CRKT Ripple. So the Ripple is another flipper design. Um, it's about seven and a half inches overall length. The blade is 3.125 inches in length. So it's a little bit more blade than what we got with the Cryo from a length perspective. With perspective, it's about the same as well, but because of the additional blade length, it ends up feeling less wide. But what you will see is when you fold this guy up and put it in your pocket, it's very narrow in your pocket. So you stick that down in your pocket, it does not take up a lot of space. The flipper is really nice on CRKT. CRKT loves to use ball bearings even in some of their lower end knives, if you want to call this lower end. Um, it was what I would call a lower end knife. They love to use the CRKT bearings on it. So there's CRKT bearings. It is a liner lock compared to the frame lock of the Cryo 2. But it, this guy is extremely light and that's why I've carried him a lot. I will find myself grabbing this knife and throwing it in my pocket when I'm going to play basketball or do other athletic things. Looking at two and a half ounces on this guy, which is extremely light. You get a lot of cutting blade for it um, on this. It looks like it is what, hollow ground? Yeah, it's a hollow ground blade. Aluminum handles, very light, uh, very nice and easy to carry. So that is the CRKT Ripple, number four on the list. Definitely worth a look as you're going through this. The number three on the list is a knife that needs very little introduction. I think most people that have looked at what knife should I, I carry for EDC have looked at something similar to the Spyderco Tenacious. So the Spyderco Tenacious, this is actually my son's knife. Um, this is the black on black. This guy is running 8 CR13 MOV. So this was a 14, 8 CR 14 MOV, this is 8 CR 13 MOV. It's actually a pretty darn good steel, the way Spyderco does it. It is a, and most of these I believe are made in China knives. Um, yep, China. It uh, doesn't say on the ripple, you can tell I've carried this ripple a lot. It doesn't say where it's made. US patent. It doesn't mean it's made in the U.S. Um, let's see if I can see it here. It's made in Taiwan. Is where that one's made. So, tenacious. Uh, if we look at the weight on this guy real quick, just to see, it is heavier than the Ripple. It's 4.1 ounces. 4. Point, oops. 4.23 ounces. Excuse me. 4.23 ounces. So it's not as light as the Ripple, but it's lighter than the Cryo. Um, and it has the nice spidey hole that spider co's are known for flicks open uh, great action extremely reliable strong like lockup knife um, just a very good entry level spider co um, again tip up tip down left or right carry depending on how you like it and you know I can tell you that this is one sturdy tough knife I gave this my son has his own collection now this was one of the first um, that I gave him to add to his collection, you know, as my collection grows and changes, but definitely a, a knife worth a look. And definitely if you're looking for your first Spider Co, don't want to do big investments for less than 50 bucks. We're looking at a $45 knife right here with the G10. I mean, you're getting G10 scales. You're not getting it super heavy. It's still close to that four ounce that I like for my EDC knives extremely quality knife from Spider Co with the tenacious coming in at number number three number two on the list is kind of an interesting it's kind of new to my possession over the last few weeks um, carried it off and on you know carried it all over the weekend um, but it is the rat Ontario model 2 liner lock knife so this is running OS 8 steel, and again this is the RAT 2. Um, it's liner lock, it's thumb stud deployment only, and I'll tell you, <laughs> these almost feel like they're 
spring assisted the way they open they open up really fast if you've ever sharpened os 8 it is so nice to sharpen it gets really really sharp if i zoom in on this a little bit you'll see the reflection in this bad boy you can see that edge that os 8 takes that nice polished look um, it gets extremely sharp it's not a super steel so you always have to you know it takes a little more care than some of the super steels do but um, this is a great knife if we look at the overall weight on this bad boy that, time, that scale times out quick doesn't it so we're looking at 2.75 ounces so it's almost as light as the ripple you get a very nice small profile in your pocket it's just a really good size for an everyday carry kind of knife um, again very easy to deploy and put back in one-handed liner locks are always easy um, unless you're lefty the nice thing is this does come in different colors as well so I actually bought my wife one so when we go camping she has something to use as a camp knife um, and you know these guys are really inexpensive 31 bucks and you get a great everyday carry knife solidly built made in the USA believe it or not oh no Taiwan sorry these ones are made in Taiwan even though the company is based in New York I believe these are made in Taiwan Taiwan steel um, but they you know it is an American company like all of these guys are um, extremely extremely good knife and I've really enjoyed carrying this knife lately it comes in at number two maybe because I've been carrying it so much lately and I just really like it um, it's flexible tip up tip down left or right carry thumb stud deployment is one of my favorite deployments I prefer you know really my favorite three deployment models are flipper thumb stud and spidey hole so um, that covers most of them doesn't it except for the fingernail type I will leave this out since it's October breast cancer awareness breast cancer awareness month but that is the um, rat 2 now I'll also make kinda like I did with the cryo there is the rat 1 which as you can see is significantly larger in size um, the rat 1 is spring assisted I don't enjoy the rat 1 as much as I like the rat 2 even though I do like the bigger size the bigger handle has better ergonomics I think than the rat 2 the rat one is um, spring assisted it has a lock um, really the way that the spring assist works it makes me feel a little bit nervous just because the there's not a lot of uh, play in that detent holding it shut uh, but again it is tip up tip down carry it's about 50 bucks it's, I think I got it for like 51 dollars so it was a little bit over our um, 50 dollars I put it in this family um, it's a little bit heavier obviously but coming in at number two is the rat 2 and this is money well spent I'm glad I bought these knives you know the pink one and the orange one um, really nice in pocket nice to carry so what's left to really do a, a number one shot of is really one it's my son's favorite knife that I still own or at least one of them it's it's really pretty famous you know I think a lot of people that you know have any number of pocket knives probably have at least one of these in their collection or did at one point um, it's extremely light it's extremely quick to open it can get extremely sharp it falls under this fifty dollar range at about forty three bucks and this is the Kershaw leak so I know this isn't everyone's favorite knife it happens to be my favorite knife to carry if we look just for starters squeeze these guys together here so we can get the scale in here just for starters we look at the weight of this guy it is 2.5 ounces we'll say is that zero yeah 2.5 ounces I could tell you this one feels lighter than any of the other knives I, that you're looking at it feels lighter it gets razor sharp this is the sharpest knife that I have in my collection anywhere the edge polishes up really nicely on this as well the steel on this is Sandvik 14 C 28 N it is a Warncliffe blade and I love Warncliffe knives 
Um, it's I almost call this kind of a modified worn cliff because it is not quite perfectly straight across the bottom. Um, it is aluminum handles, but you can get handles all different colors. You can get handles different materials. They'll have aluminum. I believe they have titanium version. You can get one that's like tie dye, rainbow looking. Um, extremely, you know, effective knife. It's a great gentleman's carry. It's small. I don't use pocket clips, so the fact that this is not, or very often anyway, I've been lately a little more, but most of the time I don't, so it not being a deep carry pocket clip really doesn't bother me that much, but I have seen on eBay and other places you can actually get deeper carry pocket clips for these. It's tip up, tip down, right handed carry only. You can deploy it with the thumb stud or the flipper. It is spring assisted, but it just feels better spring assisted than many of the other spring assisted knives. Um, Kershaw does such a great job with their spring assisted knives. It's hard to beat. Uh, the price on this guy on Blade HQ right now for this very, you know, purple model is um, 42.95 inches. Or uh, 42.95, $42.95. Sorry, it's a three inch blade is what I was thinking of. Um, we also, you want to make sure that whichever knife you look at, these are kind of all in roughly the same blade size. Roughly that, you know, two and three quarters to, you know, maybe three inch blades. You want to make sure that, you know, maybe a little more than three on this guy. Yeah, a little more than three on the Tenacious. But make sure you know your laws wherever you're at. Know if you're allowed to carry these. There are smaller smaller versions out there. Um, yeah, the Tenacious is 3.4 inches in size for blade. So, you know, make sure if you live in L.A., you're looking at the proper blade length for what you're allowed to carry. So anyway, these are my uh, my top five under 50 um, knives. It's what I have in my collection. I have a couple more that fall into that category, but these are really the five that I've found I've carried the most and I feel like are the best value. Um, I really, you know, it's not an exhaustive list and quite frankly, there could be some that are missing or forgotten. Please leave comments down below if down below here, if you have an idea of what you consider to be a better um, EDC blade under 50 bucks, um, always open to discussions and, and I'm not right on everything. This is again just one guy's opinion. Um, I will point out the other thing, all of these are extremely easy to sharpen. You know, I do a lot for customers all the time and um, they're all pretty easy to sharpen to get a good clean edge and then stropping them up actually keeps them sharp for a long time if you don't over exaggerate the edge um, angle but anyways yeah leave leave a note down below again we're getting this channel ramped up so please leave comments please hit the subscribe button and please give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it um, have a great week guys I'll talk to you later